Check this shit out. Here's a title that sounds familiar, but I'm guessing it probably wasn't to most of us. Batman Returns. This is the only Batman NES game not made by Sunsoft, who are responsible for the classic Batman the Video Game and its incredible looking sequel, Batman Return of the Joker. But if I had to choose an adequate 8-bit substitute to fill in for Sunsoft, the boys at Konami would absolutely be my first pick. As Batman Returns was a huge movie back in the day, it's no surprise that there were a ton of games based on the film for pretty much every system you can think of. Konami worked on the Super Nintendo port, which is also a single-player beat-em-up, but a massive upgrade over the 8-bit version with better graphics and controls, and everything else a 16-bit title had. But does that make the NES version inferior per se? Well, yes and no. I hadn't seen the movie in years, so I decided to sit down and give it another whirl, and I have to say it's... wow. It does look pretty cool, like the set design is unbelievable. Sometimes I forget what studios spent on practical stuff like this back in the day. The performances of Pfeiffer, Walken, and DeVito are so over the top that it kind of works, but the script is awful and the plot makes no sense. Walken's character, Max Shrex, wants to build a power station that steals electricity, so he turns the sewer-dwelling deformed maniac penguin into a mayoral candidate to push forward his agenda? And Catwoman is even crazier, getting pushed out of a window by her boss and being licked awake by cats then makes her acrobatic and also hate Batman for some reason. That and they gave Bruce Wayne slash Batman zero dialogue outside of a few thirsty moments chasing Selina Kyle around. It's amazing. Kind of a boring, fascinating mess. What's cool though is that Konami clearly loved this movie, and so spent a ton of time and effort incorporating many of the film's sets, memorable scenes, and of course madcap villains into their NES port. In fact, most every member of the Red Triangle Gang makes an appearance, from these Day of the Dead skull dudes on bikes, these clowns on stilts who, let's be honest, would probably be the world's least intimidating criminals, these flame-throwing devils who Batman straight up executes in the film, Jesus dude! These surprisingly tough tumblers based on this guy who casually somersaults to kidnap a baby, and even the machine gun wielding organ grinder who's played by Vincent Schiavelli, an actor with a face you just can't forget. But the faithfulness extends way beyond the characters. Like the film, there's a ton of disembodied head statues littering the skyline for no reason. And by that I mean why doesn't every city design their buildings this way? That and the amazing giant cat head that's the symbol for Shrek Industries pops up here and there. Neat. Also, the cutscenes are pretty stellar. Not only do they tell the story of the movie in a clear but succinct manner, but there's some really nice renderings of the main actor's faces. And I don't know why, but there's something really funny to me about the penguin getting endlessly pummeled by an entire grocery store's worth of vegetables. Beyond that though, there are a lot of details in the background that I can't remember, was this in the movie? Like, if not for these mini signs telling you this was a skating rink, wouldn't you think Batman was just slipping around in the sewer? And what is this nightmare lurking in the shadows? Do these clowns worship Nosferatu Jesus? Or what's up with this sign that just says mayo? Yum! And what is this monstrosity in the background during the Catwoman fight? I have no idea! I keep thinking on it and I cannot figure it out. Also, check out this circus where all these locked up children are pleading at you while reaching through these jail bars. Damn, that's bleak. I don't think any of this was in the film, which means, man, these Konami dudes were dark. If you can't tell by now, Batman Returns for NES is a beat-em-up. You play as Batman naturally, and you've got to punch your way through six levels in order to face the penguin and save the day. The controls are pretty standard 8-bit beat-em-up. A jumps, B punches, A and then B does a jump kick, and A and B together does a super move where Batman swooshes his cape like a flamboyant matador. No idea how that would hurt anyone, but as it hilariously also hurts Batman, it's totally worth the show out. In addition to those basics, there's also down in A, which lets you slide tackle bad guys, and down in B, which lets you block. That's honestly pretty cool to give you the block, as you'd be surprised how many beat-em-ups do not have that option, meaning it's basically a constant slugfest with no strategy other than hit the other guy first. 
I will say though that while it comes in handy, for some reason it doesn't quite come out every time I press it. So there's often occasions where I'm accidentally blocking their fists with my bat face. No idea why either, as I never have this execution error with the slide move. The first stage starts off pretty straightforward, just womp and stomp every clown buddy in sight, but then you get to this chunky Zangief who relentlessly spinning lariats you to death. I tried taking this dude on 20 times and he lit me up. There's gotta be something I'm missing. Well yeah, in addition to your regular arsenal of attacks, pressing select gives you a projectile, and now you can give him the business with your batarangs. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You've also got access to your grappling hook, which can do things like attack enemies above you, or let you reach higher platforms. Both of these are really cool additions, as the batarangs run out, so you need to be strategic with their use, and while the grappling hook is inexhaustible, it's really only functional in very obvious situations. Meaning that yeah, either one can come in handy, but neither is especially overpowered or overused throughout the game. Like another Konami beat-em-up from around the same time, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, there is a bit of strategy to the simplistic combat. You do the most damage with your standard punching combo, but it's pretty hard to line up with an enemy without getting hit yourself. The jumping kick or slide are really great ways to approach an enemy from afar, but once you hit them, you only get one extra whack in before they fall down. So you need to pick your spots, use the movement attacks on hard to hit enemies, or just get close enough to drop that killer combo on them. But wait, there's more! Konami snuck in a couple shoot 'em up sequences in here. All right. The Batmobile section has you racing after a circus train while avoiding the usual barricades and barrels that are always laying around the streets in these games. My favorite thing here is that when enemies have their vehicles destroyed, they either hop off and hit the ground running at a speed even faster than their motorcycles, or they leap comically up into the air and try to land on the Batmobile and, I don't know, dry hump your window to death? Now that's a kamikaze mission I can get behind. There's also a bonus stage where you pilot the bat shark, but all you do is grab discs for points. Something about the speed and various textures on display here does not work, and I get nauseous just looking at this. Ugh. Speaking of nauseous, after you beat the penguin, the game goes into this Pokemon-worthy title sequence. Make it stop! After that, there's an actual penguin that says I took too long to get here. I did? Turns out if you don't ever use a continue, you'll get an extra scene of the penguin twitching, Batman looking disinterested, and half a Catwoman in repose. Yay. The animal penguin does return to say, awesome, you are the hero of heroes. So I guess it's kind of worth it. That's just something that doesn't happen every day. And if you're wondering how hard it would be to achieve the secret ending, cool boy. You only have one life, that's it. And while you do have infinite continues, doing so takes you all the way back to the beginning of the level. There are these boxes you can find that act as an extra bar of health, and while that does help a bit, it's still not enough. This game is pretty tough, with few power-ups to be found, and enemy attack patterns that become less predictable as the levels progress. The graphics are just... odd. Like all the sprites are super small, and there's usually only two enemies on screen at one time. Compare it back to Turtles 3, which can handle multiple enemies, stage hazards, and two players on screen all at once, and all with characters that could swallow Batman whole in one gulp. So what gives here? I've been making a lot of assumptions on this channel about late era NES games that I think were secretly designed to be Game Boy titles, and I'm making those outlandish claims based on stuff like sprite size, simple color palettes, and weird outlines to the characters. And at first, the tiny look of Batman does give me that handheld vibe for sure, but there was no Game Boy version of Batman Returns. Honestly, and this is completely speculation on my part, I think Konami developed the absolute best Batman game ever for the Game Boy, and for whatever reason couldn't release it in portable form, and so repurposed it for the soon-to-be-defunct NES. I just can't think of any other reason why a company like Konami, who within a year of Batman Returns' release, made NES games that looked like this, or this, and yet could only put out this. Anyway, who knows really, but despite its unassuming presentation, there are a lot of visual elements to Batman Returns that do look pretty great. 
The aforementioned cutscenes are excellent. The sprite animations are surprisingly diverse with all kinds of weird movements programmed in for everyone. And these locations are well rendered and distinct, really giving the game a great atmosphere that's wholly reminiscent of the film it's based on. And overall, yeah, Batman Returns is, it's okay. The music is solid, but maybe not as catchy as most Konami jammers. The graphics are kind of deceptive, both simple and boring, but then with surprisingly complex sprite movements and surreal detailed imagery in the backgrounds. The controls can be a little hit or miss, but I do think the variety of options adds way more dynamic gameplay than this genre usually affords. But when it comes to beat em ups, the best ones in my opinion are always two player co-op. Obviously, they can be played solo, and certain games like the poorly named Double Dragon only give you the option to play one player, but let's be honest, this genre of game is pretty monotonous. Part of what makes playing these titles more engrossing is that with a friend, you can develop teamwork tactics, like who will attack which enemy, or who's got the lowest health bar and so needs to eat the food, or, ah shit, I died, bring me back with one of your extra lives. The cooperative aspect adds more strategy and thought to even the simplest of playthroughs. There's honestly only one solo beat-em-up for the NES that I'd recommend, Mighty Final Fight, and that's because aside from the amazing music and graphics, the wide variety of moves specific to each of the three characters, coupled with the upgrade system, make it an especially addictive and fun title. And while Batman Returns is in no way a bad game, it's actually pretty good, it is no Mighty Final Fight. But if you've already tried the best, I'd say Batman Returns is at least a step above the rest. Big thanks to Pac-Man Face, who recently joined my Patreon and for whom I've drawn this sign. I was gonna go full Pac-Man, but the guy said he loved Castlevania 3, so who am I to argue? Thanks, bud. If you want to be a cool cat like him, head on over to patreon.com slash where I'm posting weekly bonus videos. Until next time, thanks for watching.